morning and welcome to the School of Consciousness. Today, like I said, we're going to talk about advanced consciousness development. So in today's session, we're going to start by exploring spiritual enlightenment, right? Because it doesn't matter what you achieve in your life, you will never feel satisfied or fulfilled unless you have this uh, spiritual awareness or a, a, a desire to seek spiritual enlightenment because that's the only one thing that can ever really give you a strong sense of fulfillment. Now, you know, you can get fulfillment in life from other areas, right? So your family obviously is, if you have a family, if you have kids, that's going to be something that gives you a strong sense of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. If you have a career that you love, right, that can give you a strong sense of purpose and fulfillment and stuff like that. But when when it all um, boils down to it, right, the one thing that we're going to uh, have to face in our life is, you know, our the, the other side, right? The spiritual self. And that's going to happen for all of us at one at one point or another. And so I really believe that when we work on spiritual enlightenment or when we at least like move towards it, right? Uh, it's something that can give us a strong sense of feeling complete, com feeling fulfilled, feeling whole, feeling a sense of oneness, Um and it's a really, really healing path to go on, right? Oftentimes when I'm talking about healing, I'll talk about um, returning to health or returning to wholeness. So when we're healing, I really believe that healing is returning back to health or back to wholeness. You know, if you see, um, if you imagine a plant that is unwell, right? Or like a garden plant, and it looks like it's its leaves are kind of like, you know, dying, if you were to heal that plant, right, there's probably a few things that you're going to do. You're going to take care of the soil. You're going to make sure it gets good sunlight. You're going to make sure it gets um, water. And if you give it the right care, it comes back to life. It comes back to health. It comes back to this um, beautiful state of like its natural, um, you know, beingness. And so I really believe that with humans, we're just like, you might've heard on Instagram on the memes, people say we're just like garden plants, um, with complex emotions. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same thing, right? We can give ourselves the care that we need, the water that we need, the sunshine that we need, and we can heal ourselves and return to wholeness. And I really believe that that is a spiritual journey. And so when we're moving towards um, spiritual enlightenment, uh, yeah, we can really start to get a stronger sense for our own innate wholeness and completeness and oneness right? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we actually tap into that? And the first thing that we need to understand is that it's not going to happen just up here. So a lot of people have in their life desires or things that they want, right? Um, and, you know, oftentimes they're coming from up here. They're coming from the head. I want all these different things, right? I want all these material things or I want my life to be this certain way, uh, and if we're, if we're always stuck in the head, it's actually a very limited uh, place to be, right? What we want to do as well is connect with our heart. So we need to connect with our heart and have our head and our heart working together, right? Because the, the, the mind is for thinking, the heart is for feeling, and the spiritual journey is a journey of learning how to feel and understanding your feelings and learning how to essentially develop, um, yeah, just a strong understanding of, of yourself, your feelings, your thoughts, and all of those kinds of things. So we want to come from the head down to the heart. And then ultimately, we actually want to transcend or go beyond the head and the heart. And what I mean by that is you can be aware of your, your head and your thoughts and your desires. You can, you can be aware of it. If I ask you, what are you, what are you desiring? What are you wanting in your life? You'll be able to go, okay, I want this thing and this thing and this thing, right? So in that sense, you're aware of it. You know what you want. Now, if I ask you what you're feeling, right? 
You can also be aware of that while well, I'm feeling this thing, I'm feeling this thing, I'm feeling this thing. And if I ask you, what do you want to feel? You could say, oh, well, I want to feel this way. I want to feel this way. And I want to feel this way. So, you know, you have awareness of yourself. Now, it's very important that we un understand this because your awareness is actually the, the key. It's the doorway. It's the pathway towards spiritual enlightenment. Your awareness is like the, it's the magical rainbow road that will take you to a place of spiritual enlightenment. So we have to develop awareness of our thoughts and then awareness of our emotions. But then at, at some stage, once we get these two things working together properly, we also need to then transcend them or go beyond them and to understand that these are just things that we experience. So when we are connected to our awareness and we are really understanding our awareness of things, we're able to essentially disconnect from it, which will give us a much wider perspective of what is happening in the world and in our life. And what I mean by that is if we are, if we are, very connected to our thoughts and feelings, we can be living in a limited perspective and it's limited to our own self, right? So it, there's a lot of paradoxes in spirituality. You do have to understand yourself. You have to understand your thoughts. You have to understand your emotions. You have to have the head and the heart working in, in harmony and in synchroni synchronicity. So the your body and yourself is working in synchronicity within yourself, within your own systems internally. You've got this beautiful harmony of the head and the heart in, in this beautiful uh, unifying kind of harmony working together, right? And then what you need to do is actually let go of the self, let go of your thoughts and, and your feelings about things and transcend that into a larger awareness, an awareness that holds not just your thoughts and emotions, but also other people's uh, experience, the world's experience. You know, you often hear me telling um, like uh, teaching on, others right how do we understand others how do we have compassion for others because when we do that we get beyond ourselves. we get over ourselves, and it's a very that's a very spiritual thing right to be able to get over the self um, to transcend the self to expand our sense of self to include not only ourself but others as well Right, so you can start to develop this, and even the natural world. Right, starting to realize that um, if I expand my awareness to hold capacity for what everyone else is going through and what what else is going on in the world, I'm going to be able to be in this um, more expanded, larger sense of self. And it's actually more of a it's more of a sense of oneness. You you can start to realize that. If my awareness, if I can be aware of myself, for example, or if you can be aware of yourself and you can also be aware of others, your awareness is now holding more, right? And when it comes to your awareness, one thing that's really important to understand, and this is probably a more advanced concept, is that everything in your, everything is being held in your awareness, there is nothing outside of your awareness. So you, we got to really let that one sink in. There is nothing outside of your awareness. Your awareness holds your entire experience. Your awareness, you, like you have to be aware of something to experience it. If you didn't have your awareness, you wouldn't be able to experience it. Therefore, everything is held within your awareness. Now, if you guys have any questions about this as we move through this session, just drop them in the chat box. Uh, yeah. Your awareness holds everything. That's just a, a fact. If you weren't aware you wouldn't experience anything. 
If you had no awareness, you wouldn't experience anything. But the fact that you do have awareness allows you to experience everything. And so when we get beyond ourself, right, because usually we have our awareness, which is very like, like, fo like focused on just me and my problems, right? Or, or my desires or my goals or my challenges or whatever. And so we're, we're kind of like stuck in our head usually, right? This is the uh, coming back to what I was talking about before. We often get stuck in our head. So this is overthinking, anxiety, all these kinds of things. We're stuck in the head. We're stuck in just like literally just this little tiny little space here, right? <laughs> and it feels like um, if we're stuck in there, that's why we have fear, right? That's why we have anxiety because we're, we're limited, we are limited and also we have this perspective that we are separate, right? So there's this perspective of like, I'm just this little person with my problems and I'm actually separate to the world and the world is dangerous, right? And then boom, then I have anxiety, then I have fear, right? And now that could come from um, conditioning, trauma from the past, whatever it is, the things that you've learned about yourself during you know, your life, whatever it happened in the past, you know, it could, could have created that. But in this present moment here with me right now, I'm telling you that you can actually expand beyond your current perspective and your current stories and your current narratives and your current thoughts. And when you do, when you allow your awareness to not just be stuck all up here, but to first take that, that trip down to your heart to start to understand your feelings better so that you're, you're automatically like opening up a little bit, right? So you're not just in the head. Now you're in the heart and the head. So you've got a bit of a bigger awareness, right? You, you're understanding your emotions. You're connecting to your heart. You're learning how to understand your feelings uh, and all of those things, which are very important on the spiritual journey. I'll talk to that in a second. But once you take that journey from the head to the heart, you can start to have more um, compassion, love, understanding for others, right? Because you understand yourself and your feelings. When you're living from the heart, you're living from a, a much more loving place. People say it's a heart center. It's a place of love, right? When you have your heart open, right? You're trusting or you're, 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 when your heart's open, you're being vulnerable, you're being loving, you're being compassionate, right? So when you can take that journey from the head down to the heart and just start by loving yourself, being compassionate for yourself, understanding yourself, from there, once you learn how to do that internally within yourself, from there the heart opens and your whole perspective opens and you can now hold capacity for everyone else as well. Or at least, you know, start with your immediate environment, right? Um, start with your closer, you know, connections, your closer community, your closer network. But you start to develop this understanding that uh, I'm not just myself, right? I, I, am, I am myself. And if I open my awareness to a broader range, I can actually hold uh, a much larger sense of, perspective of who I am and my place in the world. So you start to be able to open up to a more unified vision or a more unified perspective of the world and the people in it and yourself. So so even, even just from going from just being stuck up in the head to coming down to the heart and opening, you start to open up, right? You start to open up your awareness to hold more, to hold more compassion, to hold more love for others. And you also, what I was talking about before is you start to realize when you start to get out of your head and over yourself, you start to realize that your awareness is actually um, holding everything. And if, if everything that you're experiencing is being held in your awareness, you actually are directly connected to everything else. You are directly connected to everything else through your awareness. The fact that something is in your awareness means that you have a direct connection to it. And this is a more subtle, um, non-physical connection that I'm talking about, right? Because you could say, well, Josh, like you're just on a computer screen there. I'm not connected to you. <clears throat> now, physically, we might not be able to touch, but we're seeing each other, right? Well, I'm not seeing you guys because your video is off <laughs> or you're watching the replay, but you can see me, right? And But I can see things in the room. I can see this plant behind me, 
right? And I, I, can, I know I'm not physically connected to this plant unless I'm touching it like that. However, it's in my awareness, right? So therefore, it's energetically or non-physically, we are together because there's a plant, here's me. The only thing that separates us is just the physical space between us. But that, um, you know, that's very basic level stuff, right? I'm sure if you guys are here listening to me talk about this stuff, you are aware that the physical world is not just all that there is. The physical world is one aspect of our reality, but just the fact that we're talking about thoughts, thoughts are another aspect of reality that are non-physical, right? You can't see my thoughts, but and you can't even see your own thoughts, but you know that they're there in some non-physical space. And same with your feelings and your emotions. You can't necessarily um, hold on to them physically, but they're there. You know that they're there. You feel them. They're non-physical. Although sometimes feelings can be quite physical as well, right? Sometimes you feel things and you can actually feel it physically in your body. And even with your thoughts, right? Sometimes if you're overthinking a lot, it's like it's not really physical, but sometimes it can cause almost a physical response. And now if we go a, a step further, when, you, when you're in a room with someone and you, they're really angry, you will feel that coming from them. There's nothing, there's no like, there's not this, this entity called anger between you that's a physical thing, but you feel it. You can feel an anger coming from that person. And if you're in a room with someone you love and you're very connected, right, you can also feel that in this non-physical space, right? So everything, um, everything has a kind of resonance or a vibration to it, a feeling to it. Um, even if you go sit down next to a tree for long enough, right, you're going to have a, a certain kind of experience. I'm not saying that you need to go and hug the tree, but if you were just to sit down quietly next to a tree for a while, you know, you would have a different experience than, for example, sitting down up against a concrete building in the city. You would have two different experiences. And that's proof that the space that we're in has a certain kind of uh, resonance, right? So when it comes to our experience that we're having, we need to broaden our mind and realize that if I am aware of something and if I am uh, experiencing that thing, I have some kind of a connection to it. And so this is where it starts to get a little bit more advanced, right? Because it can be quite mind bending to think like this. Right, it's to to realize that everything that's in your space, everything that is around you, or that you can that you are experiencing through your awareness, you are directly connected to that thing. Even if you don't realize it, even if it's only subtle. But that connection and this realization or this understanding of this truth, it is very expansive for your mind. Because you start to get a sense of oneness. I am one with everything. Right? Everything that I experience. There, there, you start to get this, this, this subtle feeling of oneness. And that's a really, really powerful place to be. Because when you're in this, um, this, aware, this level of awareness that's um, almost like a unity consciousness where you're, where you're feeling connected to everything... <laughs> it's much different than just being stuck in your own head. And so this is what we're speaking into now. It's like, how do we actually start to live from this place of um, unity consciousness? This is advanced consciousness development. We are going beyond ourself and our pride and our, our own like little, little stubbornness of who we think we are. And we're expanding into a much um, broader perspective and a much larger awareness. And really the goal for that is to start to get a sense of oneness because when you have this sense of oneness, 
it's very easy to love things, <laughs> right? It's very easy to live in a, like loving awareness, as Ram Das would say. He would say, I am loving awareness, right? Because when you when you when you realize that you are connected to everything else and everyone else, the natural state um is love. Because you are one with everything else. So why would you why would you want to um be in like a a fight with it? You wouldn't. You would want to be in a loving state because you're at one with all of that with all that is. And that's essentially spiritual enlightenment right it's it's this understanding that we are one with all that is so that's what we want to start to get to if we're talking about you know spiritual development consciousness development we want to start to get into this deeper understanding that we are one with everything and it's at a very like energetic non-physical level as well it's not a physical thing, right? It's not like a logical thing that you're just going to point your finger on and say, yep, it's it's a feeling. So that's why we have to go through the heart to get there. But coming back to where we started, the first thing that we've got to do is just get out of our head. Get out of our head, come down to our heart. From our heart, we can start to expand into a, a much broader perspective, a much more advanced or higher or deeper a wider level of consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Now, the reason why our emotions are important in this is because we can't, it's very hard. Um, I actually would say that you, you can't do that. You can't have that sense of spiritual enlightenment until you have completely, like, until you have learned to love and accept yourself totally. So this is why we start in the head and the heart. You need to learn how to love and accept yourself totally. And this is the problem that people have. It's because if you want to love and accept yourself completely and totally, you have to learn how to love all of the parts of yourself that you hate. So there might be parts of yourself that you don't like, you're ashamed of, um, you're disappointed by, you feel guilty about, maybe you've got the anxiety, you're fearful of certain parts of yourself, you get angry, you get frustrated, Right. And and then and then when you do that, when you when you have those emotionally triggering events, then you beat yourself up about it. You say, oh, I shouldn't have had that experience. I'm such a bad person, or fuck, that sucks. Like I hate that I do that. Right. If you have that um hatred towards yourself, there's like this split. It's like, well, I want to be over here only experiencing joy and love and peace and all these beautiful things and happiness. And I don't want to experience fear and anger and frustration and guilt and shame and all the rest of it. But if you want to love yourself completely and move towards spiritual enlightenment, you actually need to learn how to love the parts of yourself that you don't like. You have to learn how to love the fear, love the anger, love uh, the guilt and the shame and, and even the grief and all of that stuff. You need to learn how to love it because that's the nature of being a human. You're going to experience all of this stuff. You can't just only want to experience happiness and joy and love and peace because love is, is something that is all encompassing to be in love means to love something totally. And that means to, if you want to love yourself, you need to love all parts of yourself. So we need how we need to learn how to become loving and un, uh, accepting and understanding of ourself first. Then when we learn how to love, accept and understand ourselves, it becomes a lot easier to love and accept and understand others. And when you really get a good handle of loving, accepting, understanding others, you can broaden that out to the whole entire experience that you're having. Everything that you're experiencing in your whole awareness, you love it. That is spiritual enlightenment, right? That is the path towards spiritual enlightenment. All of the gurus and the avatars and the the you know um, the Buddhas and the Jesuses and all these kinds of people. That's the whole message. Right? Love everything. <laughs> they love everything. Like there's no um. It's they're totally forgiving, totally compassionate, totally understanding, totally loving. Right. The whole thing with Jesus is like he went and got himself nailed to a cross, 
And he didn't even fight back against the people that were nailing him to the cross. That's why it's such a powerful story. That is total love. I don't, I don't necessarily believe in like Christianity or anything like that, but I think it's a very powerful story because this dude just like let himself just be killed. <laughs> who, who does that? No one. Usually there's going to be a lot of anger, hatred, resistance, fighting, frustration, fear. And maybe he had uh, all of those feelings. Maybe he did. He's a, he was, they say he was a human, right? So maybe he felt all of those things. But the difference was he didn't react to those feelings. He just allowed himself to go through that process, surrendered totally to love. And that's why there's this strong message of Jesus, right? Or this massive, powerful story about this guy. Totally loving, totally forgiving, totally accepting to the nth degree, to the most radical degree that you could ever do that. And so that's why it's a powerful message, right? To be totally loving, totally accepting, totally forgiving, totally understanding, no resistance, non-resistance, boom, here I am, totally surrendered. That's the path. And that's, that's advanced consciousness development, right? So in a, in, a, in a roundabout way, we want to go from take this first journey. It all starts here, right? We have to get out of our head first, right? The reason why I called um, my business Mind Launch is because the idea is you launch out of your mind, right? You got to get out of your mind. You got to get out of your own head. And then you want to actually come down to your heart, learn how to love and accept all parts of yourself, and you won't be perfect at that. Don't worry. Don't try to be perfect because you won't be. No one's perfect unless you're Jesus. <laughs> right? But we don't even really know what, what that was all about. <clears throat> but anyway, you you have to um you have to just have that positive intention or that loving intention. You have to have that um seeking of like this spiritual development, spiritual enlightenment, consciousness development, whatever you want to call it. There has to be this um, intention to move towards that way, right? You're not going to be perfect. No one's perfect, right? You're going to make mistakes, but that's okay. And actually I would encourage you to think about your mistakes as an opportunity to love yourself more. Can I still love myself if I, if, if I make a mistake? Can I still love myself if I, if I fuck something up? So every single mistake now is an opportunity to love yourself more and more and more. And the more that you learn how to love yourself, then the more that you will be able to love others. And then from that place, you can start to have really beautiful relationships, really healthy relationships. Uh, the internal world will start to be reflected externally, right? And so like I said at the very start of this training, most people try to get things in the external world to make themselves feel a certain way. I want the... You know, I need the relationship or I need the, the job or I need the money or I need the this, I need the that, right? And we're always trying to get all of these things externally, but you'll get all of those things and you won't feel any better. You might feel good for like five minutes and then you'll be back to square one. So, because you'll realize, well, this is, I got this thing, but now it's not what I actually, now it's not making me feel any different. Or now I got this thing, I've had all these achievements, but I'm not actually feeling any different. The most important thing is how you feel internally. And so I would encourage you to work on that first because once you do start to feel good internally, then you can start to have achievements and have things and have relationships and have job and money and all this kind of stuff. And you just feel good about it. Like you just feel, oh, cool. I feel good about this, right? Um, but if I had it, I would, I would still feel good because I've done the inner work. If I don't have it, you know, I would still feel good because I've already done the inner work. So it's not about having the thing. It's about internally you're in that place of like, cool, I love myself. I accept myself. I accept the world as it is, you know, and then I go and do whatever I need to do, right? There's another saying um, in Zen Buddhism or, or maybe it's in the Tao, um, like Eastern, Eastern philosophy. It says, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. So the, the idea is like 
you know, people think enlightenment is this grand thing where it's like, oh, once I reach enlightenment, everything's going to be okay. Um, you know, before enlightenment, you're going to be chopping water, carrying, uh, chopping wood, carrying water, like doing the things that you need to do. And then if you get enlightenment after that, you're just going to go back to just doing things, right? And living life, just doing it, you know, chopping your wood, carrying your water. So we're always going to have to do things. But do we want to be doing things from this state of like hatred towards ourselves, anger towards ourselves, fear, anxiety? Or do we want to be doing things from a place of like, I love myself like, and I accept myself and I'm going to do the things. And if I make a mistake, that's okay. I'm going to learn from it. And I'm going to just do my best to enjoy this beautiful journey of being a human. So that's really, that, that's what I think is the, most beneficial thing to work on is this this development of ourself so that we get out of our tiny little limited perspective on ourself and we learn to expand our sense of self because it's a very be very beautiful way to live right so yeah that is advanced consciousness development are there any questions about that Thanks for listening to me, guys. Appreciate you being here. Any questions or any reflections or takeaways? If there are, just drop them in the comments. Holly, love it. Cool. Yeah. So I think I summarized it pretty well just then on what we want to do. Do your best to get out of your own head. That's why things like meditation can be so helpful because the practice of meditation is around uh, learning to accept your thoughts uh, learning how to have awareness of your thoughts without being too attached to them that's why meditation is so good and from within meditation you can also you get out of the head you start to connect with your body you start to connect with how you feel right you bring your awareness out once you get this under control in meditation then you can bring your awareness down to your body you start to feel start to feel your heart you start to feel what you what's what's going on for you internally you start to understand your feelings a bit better through, all through meditation and then from there, one other thing that's really interesting that happens with meditation, right, is usually you start by sitting there in your meditation and you're very focused on the inward world. And then what you realize, uh, Alan Watts said something around this, right? He said, um, what you realize soon enough is that um, the inside world and the outside world aren't actually separate at all. So you might be in your meditation and you focus on yourself, but then you're getting distractions. There's noises outside. There's a car. There's someone making a coffee. There's someone, you know, someone said to me that they would hear their roommates pissing in the toilet. <laughs> and so you'd be in this meditation, you're trying to be calm and centered. And then you start hearing all these outside sounds. And what happens first is you, you think, um, fuck, I wish they would just shut up. Well, man, that's so distracting. And so that's coming from this separate sense of self, right? Where it's like, this is distracting me. Um, but what you realize with enough practice is you essentially start to realize, oh yeah, that person pissing in the toilet is just happening. Oh yeah, that car is just, that's just happening. The person making the coffee is just happening. Oh, my thoughts, they're just happening. My feelings, they're just happening. And so you start to just be become aware, like I said before, of everything happening. So your awareness is holding all of it and you uh, you can start to release any resistance to what is happening and instead just be accepting of what is happening. And it, when you get to that point, the outside world and the inside world, they don't feel so separate. They start to feel like one. That's what you can get through meditation as well. You start to develop this beautiful uh, awareness of oneness. There's no There's no inside and outside. Like I know I talk about that a lot. There's the inside world reflects the outside world, but it's another spiritual paradox because when you really get there, you realize there is no inside and outside. It's just all one. <laughs> so anyway, let's finish on that. Thank you guys for being here. Happy Wednesday. Uh, happy hump day. Hope you all have a great day. I'll put this recording up in the... Uh... School of Consciousness. If you guys aren't in there, go to my website. You can join in there. Um, if you're in my programs, you know this is going to be up in your um, in there anyway. So yeah, thanks guys. Have an awesome day, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.